Hello and welcome. Today we are checking out a new rifle from Bergara, the Premier MG Lite. Now Bergara is one of our best shooting rifle brands that we carry and they like others have models that are heavier with good ergonomics for target shooting and ones that are lighter for hunting and some that are kind of in the middle. But now as things change, people want the, the ergonomics and accuracy from a heavier rifle and not in some kind of middle of the road compromised rifle, but one that is the full on weight or lack thereof of a hunting rifle. Enter the MG Lite. MG because it is partly made out of magnesium, which is very, very strong, but about a third lighter than aluminum. I, I'm gonna guess here that they were gonna call it the Mag Lite for magnesium light, but I'm um, pretty sure their lawyers had something to say about that. That magnesium is found in the chassis, pretty much the bits that you see here in this bronze. And this is a chassis made by XLR. And the complete chassis, that's stock, comb, grip, and everything, only weighs 28 ounces. So this thing is on a pretty serious diet, but they haven't skimped out on features. So you still get a comb that you can adjust, you still get a pistol grip, mag fed, the stock even folds here, and you get even a bubble level in the stock. And since they're so conscious of weight savings, we see a lot of carbon fiber use on the buttstock itself. The tube and the stock shape is here is carbon. The comb is carbon fiber. The pistol grip is carbon fiber. Now, if you don't like this grip for any reason, it's just a standard AR grip, so you can change that out pretty easily. Now, the length of pull is set up on this stock as 13 and 5 8 inches. If you do want to add some spacers or mess with that, you would be best to go right to XLR, the manufacturer of the chassis, to get those parts. One thing that I did also notice when I first messed with this rifle is uh, this little spot right here is a little bit short and you might worry that it's not gonna be as ideal on a rear bag. It would have been nice if they would have kind of extended this line kind of further out and, ex and had this flat spot on the bottom be about this long. That would have been neat, but uh, this still does a pretty good job on a rear bag, it's not too, too small. What I like most about the chassis though is the forend, which you see it is full of M-lock panels as is fashionable, but also I like the rail here. This is an Arca rail. And for the most part, you haven't seen these too much in hunting. It's been more of a tactical or PRS type feature that you'd find on rifles, but it's becoming more popular for hunting rifles. Here's why. Now, depending on what type of hunting that you're doing, you may be forced to make a shot from a somewhat awkward position. And the benefit of this Arca rail is uh, first, if you want a bipod, there are bipods out there that'll let you quickly move it fore and aft on the rail. But also, as you can see here, it is a very stable platform from which to shoot off. And tripods for hunting are getting better and better with more carbon fiber, they're getting more sturdy, and they're still light enough to pack. So something like this Vortex Ridgeview Carbon here is a, a decent tripod that's light enough to take hunting, but it is still nice and sturdy to make a shot from. Now, on the subject of tripods, having a lightweight rifle like this means you can get away with using a lighter, skinnier tripod. Whereas Vortex makes the Radian, which is just beef city, that thing is strong as hell. That'll take any rifle that you can put on it, but it's a bit overkill for hunting when you have to pack that thing so long. It's big, it's bulky, it, it, it's a bit heavy, but on a super lightweight rifle like this, you can utilize a smaller, lighter tripod. Now, some other indicators of this being a Premier, it does have number eight by 40 screws on, on the top here. So when you're shopping for scope mounts, do keep that in mind. It also has a Trigger Tech primary trigger on it as well. So I've saved the best part of this rifle for the end. And I'm gonna spend a bit of time going through it because it is 
very different than what you might be used to. The barrel here. It's carbon fiber wrapped, as you can see, but it is unlike any other carbon fiber barrel that we've seen on the market. So we're gonna break it down. It's a five layer system with this barrel. Now, most carbon fiber barrels, they take a skinny stainless section and then just wrap it in carbon like the uh, reel of a fishing line. So with this though, it's a bit more sophisticated. It still has a stainless barrel as the foundation. It's actually a 410 stainless barrel, not 416. So it's a little bit nicer there. And the next layer on top of it is a sort of uh, thermally conductive resin. So it doesn't really do much to add stiffness to the barrel, but it does a really good job of letting that heat come off the stainless and move through it to get to the next layer. That next layer is a sort of stainless steel mesh, if you will. It's embedded into that resin. And like the radiator on your car, it's there to spread the surface area out to let that heat escape even more. So it has a lot of surface area, but not a ton of volume. So it radiates that heat to the next layer up very well. Next up is the first layer of carbon. Now carbon fiber, when you work with it, you can choose how you want it to be strong in which direction based off of how you weave it or even if you weave it. Now the first layer of carbon on this barrel, it's a bunch of strands that are all in the same direction. It helps keep the barrel nice and straight, which is of course good for accuracy, but it also is very, very stiff and resistant to the barrel trying to whip around, which also does help for accuracy. Now it doesn't have good strength in other directions, but that's why we have a top layer of a 45 degree anti-torsion carbon fiber. Now, anti-torsion, I mean, you think, okay, that's like forces like this on the barrel. So why the, why the hell does it need that? And it makes sense as soon as you look a little bit deeper into it. So we remember Isaac Newton, Newton's uh, third law of motion. That's the, uh, the action reaction one. When the bullet is going down the barrel and it's being spun to the right, the forces that are put on that barrel to spin it right are reflected left. So as the bullet's spinning right down the barrel, the barrel has a very small tendency to want to twist in the opposite direction. This type of carbon fiber is there to resist that, therefore keeping the whip of the barrel in check. A lot of these discoveries that have been made have only been very recent with the the development of really, really advanced camera systems, uh, have we been able to actually see these effects happening with the barrel. So all this is very, very new technology. It's very sophisticated. You still have the, the stainless part of the barrel made in Spain, but all the resin, carbon fiber, witchcraft stuff, that happens in Georgia. The last thing I wanna mention on the barrel is it does come with this radial brake here. If you don't wanna run this, it does come with a thread protector as well, and that's a 5 8 by 24 thread. So it's undoubtedly a very impressive and technical rifle. Question is, who is it for? Who, what part of the shooting market is best suited to take advantage of this rifle's capabilities? First, uh, backcountry hunters, sheep hunters, any hunter who is trying to save as much weight as possible and has to pack their rifle. So the guys that are cutting toothbrushes in half to save a few fractions of an ounce, those type of shooters and hunters will value this. Because out west especially, there are shots that are common where it could be a couple hundred yards and you need a rifle that is ergonomically and technically set up to be able to make those shots at that distance. They need to be both mechanically accurate and also very easy to shoot accurately. Next, anyone wishing to shoot NRL hunting matches. These are National Rifle League matches where you have a rifle that is supposed to be set up for hunting, but you use in long range competition. There's a few classes in that. I think the one has a weight limit of 12 pounds. So some rough calculations with the weight of bipods and slings and such, it is very possible you'd be able to put a very heavy scope on this like something like a Vortex Gen 2 Razor and still make weight which sounds pretty ridiculous if you know anything about that razor. Also, anyone who wants to have one rifle and use it for both casual long range target shooting and also hunting as well. 
This one hits closer to home for me because most of what I do is long range shooting, but I do like to go whitetail hunting on occasion. And uh, right now I just use my M24, which is a heavy sucker. So uh, something like this would satisfy the ergonomics and the physical accuracy requirements for long range shooting, but it's also very much at home to be taken hunting because it's so light. The reason I say that is here in Pennsylvania, uh, and, this, and this is true of a lot of Northeast whitetail hunting, the distances are typically not very far, so you don't need a very sophisticated rifle like this to do that. But uh, using my M24 for hunting, I just I just deal with it because I don't want to have I don't want to buy a purpose-built rifle because I don't hunt that much. But uh, something like this, I mean, with the M24, I'm walking up a giant hill to the uh, tree stand and ass o'clock in the morning, and I'm I get up to the the, the uh, tree stand and I'm just pissy. I'm, I, I have to don some layers because I've sweated my ass off getting up that hill with a 90 million pound rifle. Something like this though, much more pleasant to deal with. Lastly, it's good for anyone who just wants to future-proof yourself. Let's say right now you want to get into target shooting. This is more than capable of that. But you want to make sure that in the future you have something that you could take hunting should you get the chance. This is kind of, again, it's kind of more up my alley. So uh, if you want to uh, future-proof yourself, this is a good one to consider. So that is the Bergara Premier MG Lite. If you can think of any other scenarios where this rifle would really excel, comment below. We'd like to see how people would be using a rifle like this. If you enjoyed this video, please consider giving it a like and subscribe. Also check us out on Facebook and Instagram. I'll see you next time.